Show.com. Matt Hardy. The charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. The Prince of Punk, Shannon Moore. You know, whenever like, you talk about pro wrestling, it's like there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't see, and they don't see a lot of the fights that you have to fight to actually make it to one of the top companies in the world. It's like, not only did me, Matt, and Jeff, we, you know, we fought the fight and we won. All three of us made it to top companies in the world. It's like, these guys, they went on and they're world champions now. You know, brothers to me, and then actually Blood Brothers are heavyweight champion at the same time. I think it's, it's magical. And I don't think you'll probably never see it again. So or something, just being from a small town in, in North Carolina, you know, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of disbelievers out there, you know, uh, uh, before you make it. But then when you make it, you know, you make believers out of those people. But then when you continue to just uh, evolve and get better and better and, and ultimately to get to where we are now, and to be world champions, I mean, it, it, it doesn't get any higher than that, you know. I mean, we're, we're world champions, and we're part of the WWE, and that's pretty much uh, one of the highest, you know, the highest uh, spots you can, you know, possibly get in the WWE. So I would say, you know, it's overwhelming, it's outstanding, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, very inspirational to, to a lot of uh, young kids out there that are from small towns and that, um, you know, have those dreams. It makes me feel so good and I'm so proud of them just because, you know, it's everybody's dream to be world champion. Some people, they'll get the opportunity and then some people, they won't. I may never see the opportunity, but Matt and Jeff, it makes me happy because I, I can kind of live it through them and I see them, you know, these are people that I see every week and, you know, it couldn't have happened to two better people because these guys, they've worked hard for it and they've busted their ass and they've, they've put in, you know, the blood, sweat and tears. Uh, you know, if, if you watch wrestling as a kid, you go, wow, man, this is uh, the coolest thing ever. You know, I know for me and you, we looked at those guys and, and pro wrestlers uh, were like breathing, living superheroes, you know, because they were guys that like were strong and they looked cool and they had these cool outfits and they jumped off the top rope and they would get beat up, they would come back, they just, they seemed superhuman. And so many kids have that dream to one day be a pro wrestler. And as I was saying earlier, there's tens of thousands of kids and professional wrestlers that are trying to just break into the business or break into a level to get into a promotion and get a good spot with ultimately their final goal being arriving at the WWE. You know, and for a lot of professional wrestlers, just to get into a promotion, no matter how small it is, you know, if they wrestle once a month and they have 100 people at the National Guard Armory, like, a lot of people become the champion and that's a real big deal to them, you know what I mean? But they all still strive to, to go to the WWE, coming from where we, we came from, you know, which is obviously a very small town. I think when I was born, or maybe when you were born, there were 212 people in the, that was the, popula that was the population of Cameron, 212 people. And considering we both came from there, uh, Shannon Moore was here as well, and for us to both be able to go on and make it to the WWE, uh, that, that's just a feat in its own. You know, the two brothers were able to make it to the WWE. And then when we got to the WWE, our goal was to one day be the tag team champions. And you know, that's something we achieved seven times, which is very cool in itself. And Jeff and I were known as tag team specialists. And like, uh, you know, we'll definitely go down in history as one of the best tag teams of all time. You know, disputably, the best tag team of all time. Yeah, whenever you win a world heavyweight championship or you win the world title, um, it's definitely, you know, a company, they look at you and they go, okay, this guy, you know, this guy has what it takes to pretty much get the Grammy that's going to carry our company. Um, you're, at that point, the company believes strongly that, you know, you're, you're the man. You know, these guys, they're going to put asses in seats, people want to see them, and their popularity is there. Um, it's an important role to hold. It's just because there's a lot of eyes that look at you and they go, hey, you know, I'm going to let you represent my company in the top slots. It's like winning an, an Emmy or, you know, an Oscar or, you know, just any, the biggest awards you can possibly imagine winning, 
in life. It's, it's really hard for guys to break the stigma of being a tag team wrestler, you know, but that's something that we were both able to do. And a lot of times with tag teams, you know, you have like the Shawn Michaels, Mark Gennetti, Shawn Michaels went on the great things, Bret Hart, Jim Neidhart, Bret Hart went on the great things. You know, they always looked that there would be one of us to do that, and you know, usually it was you. Uh, Jeff Hardy would go on to do great things, but we're two guys who both went on to ex uh, achieve extreme single success. And uh, we sit before everyone right now is, uh, there's three brands in the WWE, and we're two of the World Heavyweight Champions, you know, which is a, a huge feat, especially from, it's not two guys from New York or Los Angeles where the population is in the millions, you know, it's from Cameron. When you were born, there were 212 people lived there. I mean, it's very amazing. It's truly, an, it's truly an inspirational story, and it's something that I like for our viewers or our fans or you know the people who put their eyeballs on us to to look at our story and go, wow, whatever I want to do, I can do, and I can achieve anything. Uh, and on top of that, just uh, <clears throat> there's tens of thousands of people who are just trying to make it to the WWE. I mean, even once you get into the WWE, it's a complete a complete different battle to try and succeed within the WWE and to be recognized as two of the top guys in the WWE and the, uh, the heavyweight champions. I mean, that's an, that's an honor that very few people have held. I mean, I, I, I would, I'm not sure if how, I, there's been less than uh, 50 WWE champions, I know, you know, when your name's on the list and that's pretty, pretty fucking exclusive, you know. So uh, for Jeff to be the WWE champion and for me to be the ECW champion, it's, it's definitely one of those things where we've, uh, we, we've definitely uh, been an example that a lot of kids or a lot of people can look at and say, wow, if these guys did it, then I can do it. And, and I think we've always wanted them to think that. You know, I know I, I take a lot of pride in that, that I want people to look at the things I've done and I want people to look at the things Jeff have done and, and know that you can overcome all the odds and you can really achieve anything if you work hard and you, and you stay with it and you believe in yourself, regardless of what people think about you. I mean, no, nobody's had more grief and drama put on them than Jeff has, you know, with Critic, uh, critics and whatnot, but you know, Jeff says fuck the critics. He keeps he keeps doing his thing, and you know, Jeff has achieved it. You know, if he doesn't do anything else, he has achieved it. He has went as high as you can possibly go in the wrestling business, and that's fucking awesome. And that's the thing about me too, as far as uh, my appearance. Um, you know, although I am you know alternative and uh, have tattoos and cut my hair all crazy, you know, and uh, but I, I I probably like am the uh, I don't know how to put this, but like as far as being in shape. I'm probably the most pitiful looking WWE champion of all time. When it comes to like, cause I remember when Shawn Michaels when he was in, he was jacked, you know, he was a little, he was small, weighed less than I do now probably, but just in really good shape. Um, but I'm just a normal person, you know. Um, uh, take my shirt off, got a little gut, you know. But hey, I think people kind of dig that because you're, you relate, you know, you're normal. You're not some monster that's just, just uh, out of this world. You know, like I can imagine what the legend what's going through his head whenever he, you know, he watches TV and he sees both of his sons, you know, as world heavyweight champion in WWE and, you know, ECW. You know, neither one of us are crazy looking specimens. I mean, neither one of us are seven feet tall. Neither one of us look like Batista or neither one of us look like the Powers of Pain or the Road Warriors. We're very average, normal looking guys. And I think that is uh, definitely one of the attracting qualities of us to a lot of people because they can relate to us because we are like them. You know, they go, wow, if these normal looking guys can do these amazing, extraordinary things, and I mean, I, I can too. And I think they're inspired by that. And they're, they also look to us as like, you know, we're like a, uh, uh, you know, like a, uh, a ray of hope. I think Jeff and I are like a ray of hope for the normal person. They can achieve whatever dreams and whatever goals they may have. You know, I, I remember too, back in chemistry class, you know, we've come a long way and we've went through a lot of ridicule. I remember when we were uh, bouncing around on our trampoline, we called it the TWF, and uh, it was real important to us to, to wrestle those matches and to record them. And I remember showing them off in high school in uh, chemistry class one time. And I remember a uh, dude said, yeah, that's really gonna pay off well. You're bouncing around on a trampoline like a clown. <laughs> what, a, what a loser this guy is. And uh, ironically enough, I ran into that guy like 10 years later and uh, he won autographs for his kids. We were proud of the tapes we did, you know, on, on every Sunday when it, we would rent a video camera and record ourselves and we were showing it off to the locker room and say, yeah, check out what we do, man. Yeah, we're, we're starting to do a little professional wrestling, man. So if it's on a trampoline, man, it's, it's fucking wild, you know. It's out there, but then uh, the athletic director, yeah, look at there. Look at man, Jeff Hardy, professional wrestlers. Yeah, they're really gonna go somewhere with that, you know. It's just, 
so um, um, just no faith whatsoever in, in what our dreams were at the time. And, uh, and yeah, in the same scenario, like uh, you'll see those type of people around the corner now and, and the first thing they say is, hey man, can you give me some tickets for Raleigh? I heard you guys are in town. Yeah, I mean, and when you look at our path, it's like, God, I mean, we weren't given anything. We weren't get, we were given, we were given less than zero. You know, we, we didn't even start at scratch. I mean, we started, you know, we started completely from underneath. I mean, Jeff and I had no connections in the wrestling business, didn't know anyone in the wrestling business. And just to think that we actually started wrestling on a trampoline that we built a, a ring around in the woods. I mean, I burnt the woods down. Uh, you know, we had our buddies come over and we'd have matches. We'd save 20 or 25 bucks and we're in a camcorder on Sundays and build this arena. 1990 is the first time we ever started wrestling on a trampoline in our backyard. And now we're sitting in front of you 2008, 18 years later. You know, and that's when our dreams really began and that's when we started to blaze a path to get here. And you know, we've went through, you know, everything to get here and we've actually pretty much accomplished everything too. You know, like I said, tag team champions and developed several of the other titles and you know, now we sit in front of you as like the guys of a promotion and the biggest promotion in the world and it's at its biggest point ever. It's never been bigger globally than it is right now, the WWE. So, you know, for Jeff and I to be representing WWE as uh, ECW champion and WWE champion is just an awesome honor and uh, it's just still something that's kind of, you know, it's, it's very dreamlike, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was a, I mean, it was a really dirty gift um, at the time and still is when you think back to it. And, you know, it still sickens me, you know, in a sense, uh, not really, but to think about a person who would actually, you know, take a booking fee from these these poor little uh, pitiful teenagers, you know, um, they, they would get paid 150 bucks and they go out there and get their asses kicked and then, you know, they would they would, they would take 100 from us and call it a booking fee. Uh, but, you know, being the dirty gift it was, man, uh, if it wasn't for uh, that opportunity or that chance, you know, we had with the Italian Stallion to, you know, break in and start doing those jobs, you know, who knows, uh, you know, where, where or, or when we might have got a chance, so. Most tag teams, they do, they split off and, you know, one go one way and the other goes another way, you know, and sometimes one will keep going and keep wrestling and busting her ass and the other one will just downward spiral. And I think that, you know, pretty much that's the way, you know, these guys were labeled. They, everybody, I think, thought that Matt would keep trucking and he would keep busting his ass wrestling. And, you know, everybody just expected that Jeff would just kind of downward spiral. He wouldn't be able to make it without Matt on his own. And, yeah, everybody goes through hard times. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, there was Jeff. He went through some hard times. And everybody, I don't think nobody ever thought that Jeff would bounce back and become heavyweight champion. And, it's just, it's awesome seeing Jeff now as, you know, top of WWE. In my eyes, and like, I totally believe it, and I'd argue with anybody, I think that Jeff is probably the most popular WWE wrestler or pro wrestler in the world right now. Not only WWE, but in the world. I think Jeff Hardy is the most popular wrestler. And it's heartwarming, and it's just to see Matt and Jeff keep trucking, man, and to see them go on to be champions at the same time, I think it's unexpected. I don't think nobody ever expected it. When you become the champion and you win the championship, it's like you're winning a Grammy. And it's, and it's showing that, like, the place that you work, the company that you work, like, of all the professional wrestlers, of all the sports entertainers in the entire world, of all the ones that have been chosen to come and compete underneath the WWE umbrella, which are the best, the elite in the world, you are the very best. It's like winning a Grammy. It's like winning an Oscar. It's like saying like you are the best in your profession at this given time and you deserve this. And you're given that Grammy, you're given that award, and it's a very exclusive list. There's only a few people that get that opportunity, and it's the biggest compliment that you can be paid. And uh, that's truly, I think, what it's equivalent of. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, but, but honestly, uh, in my personal opinion, I honestly don't feel that I'm the best um, just because I have this, because there are so many, you know, talented guys. Uh, although it represents that, that you are the best, you're number one when you're the champ, um, I, I just think I'm deserving of it, um, and, and as well as Matt, I think, because we, we put in 
we've we've sweated too much, we've bled too much, we've you know cried too much uh, to get to where we are. So um, we're very deserving um, of these titles. And um, and sure, you sure uh, most kids and most people say, oh yeah, they're the best. But there's a lot of guys out there that are good. You know, we just but we're right there. Uh, we're, we're hanging with each and every one of them. And uh, you won the award of WB title because you were like. Uh, best normal looking redneck with a little bit of a gut. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and like I, I won, you know, I, I like won the ECW title because I'm like the most exciting, boring high flyer in the history of the WWE. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, there's just something about Jeff Hardy that you can't replace. Like, I, you know, you look at the greats, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, you can't, you couldn't have any of them go out and be Jeff Hardy. They couldn't do it. I'll tell you this too, like, it's not like they wanted to give this motherfucker this title, you know what I mean? It's just like, he kept fighting and fighting and fighting and earned it, like he, they had to give it to him. You know, I don't have the talent and grace, or I don't even have that edgy, weird charisma that Jeff has, but I'm just like so fucking stubborn and just like such a hard worker and I'll just keep on and keep on and keep on, you know, and very dedicated to what I do and it's just like, I, you know, can't be denied. You know, when other people will get lazy and get frustrated and go, Fuck it, I quit. I don't. It really is a test, you know, when you go out there, you go through the curtain and, you know, you get that crowd reaction from the very first sound of your, your theme music. Um, I mean, that, that tells a lot and that shows a lot. Even your interaction with the fans, I mean, that shows a lot. And people notice that, man. And um, so, in a way, you can't deny um, who, who the, the fans love and who they want to see as champion and uh, they don't want to see his champion because it's obvious if you just open your eyes, you know, and, and, and listen. Yeah, definitely. I could see more championships come in the future. Um, you know, there's, but it's just that first championship is the most important. It's like you can win it again and you can win it again, but it's going to be nothing like that first time you win it. The first time you win it, that's, that's the most emotional, I think. And that's whenever you pretty much can take that, that breath and go, Phew. You know what? I made it. I'm champion. And uh, you know, but I definitely think that you know Matt and Jeff. I think that they're going to go on and they'll win many more championships. And uh, you know, there's going to be many more years. You know, as far as them being in the wrestling business. You know, some people that you know they might step away for a while, but they're still young and they're going to be around and they're going to be holding championship, you know, straps for many years to come. We we've talked about this, you know, on numerous occasions. And you know, and naturally dreamt about it, uh, about it being you know a cool deal one day to do. It. And now here we are; it's happening. You know, now the question is, where do we go from here? I mean, I mean what do we do next? Um, that's, that time will tell. Matt, Jeff, these are yours, man. Y'all busted your ass, man. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, and that's straight from the heart. I love you guys. Kind of to wrap things up on my end, I would like to say a thank you to all the diehard fans of Matt and Jeff who have stuck with us through thick and thin, through good and bad, through firings, through fuck ups. You know, Jeff and I, we've had our ups, we've had our downs. You know, we've never quit. We've never shied away from what we believed in or who we truly are. And I know anyone who's ever quit, but we have been released. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, that happens. Uh -huh. you, you know, but the thing is too, if you've ever been out somewhere at a restaurant or at a mall or a store and you've met either one of us, I, I guarantee you, you've come off with a good experience. Because, you know, when people say like, does that get aggravating when wrestling fans come up to you and ask for your autograph or ask for your pictures? You know, I always go, no, because like, I'm one of those guys. You know, I, I grew up a wrestling fan just like that. And I would want to be treated like such if I would have ran into my favorite wrestler at that time. And, and we don't forget where we came from. I mean, we came up hard. Our dad raised us really hard. You know, our mom wasn't around, you know, as most people know, she passed early, but our dad was very strict, very disciplined, and I'm glad he raised us like that. You know, we're, we're very well-mannered, and we're very appreciative of what we have and what people give us, and I know if you're a fan somewhere and you've met us somewhere on a one-on-one -on -one experience, you definitely have a good story. I know you don't have any bad stories because we don't produce those, but I want to thank everyone that has supported us to this point. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. I think it's Jeff's expression. He, he said it originally, but I say it all the time too because without you, there would be no us. So uh, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for helping us get here. And uh, you know, keep, stick, uh, keep sticking with Matt and Jeff Hardy. There's going to be great things in the future. I'm going to let Jeff close out with whatever he wants to say. Yeah, I just want to say this tune is boring. I mean, we're going we're gonna to change this world one match at a time. I mean, uh, uh, slap chop. <laughs> slap chop. <laughs> <laughs>
Sham wow. Taking the hardest show to TV, bits. Now that's, now that's a pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about.